Today on our 2019 Keystone Springdale Travel Trailer, we'll be installing Lippert Components Electric Ground Control TT Automatic 5-Point Travel Trailer Leveling System. These jacks will auto-level your trailer with the touch of a button. You can additionally control each jack individually from the control panels on the inside on the LCD. You can raise and lower your front jack right from the front panel. You can auto-level it. You can adjust your setup for your hitch height and retract all of your jacks back in. By pressing the auto level, our trailer will automatically level itself. Our started by leveling the front. Now that it's leveled the front, it's retracting our tongue jack. And now it's moved on and it's leveling the rear. This is much easier and more efficient than manual leveling. If you do it manually, you're gonna to have to have some bubble levels and you're gonna to have to check the front, the rear, the sides over and over until you get it level. The built-in sensors on this one will do it automatically for you without you having to do anything more than touching a button. The included LCD screen will allow you to fine tune the adjustments as well and also provide more information on how your system's operating. Included with this kit, you're going to get the rear levelers, the front levelers, a tongue jack, the control panels to operate it, and all the necessary wiring to get it installed. Now, regardless of which trailer you have, the components are gonna install the exact same way. You may need to move them forward or backward a little bit to avoid components that's on your trailer, but otherwise the installation is gonna be identical. So you can use this video as a guide for any trailer. We're underneath our trailer on the driver's side behind the rear axle, we're gonna start by mounting our mounting brackets for our C-jacks. To find the appropriate position that you'll wanna place these in, you'll wanna use a piece of string and go from the bottom of the tire where it meets the ground. Extend that string tight to the back of the trailer and to its lowest point. That string is going to be an imaginary line that we're gonna to use to determine where we can mount our brackets. You need to have at least nine and a half inches from the bottom of the frame to that string you're pulling tight in order to mount it. If you don't have enough space, you cannot mount it there. You also need to have 18 inches from the center of your bracket to the tire here. So you have to have at least that distance. So I made sure that I had at least nine inches from any point along our bracket here. And from the center of the bracket to the tire, we have our 18 inches. We'll now use our bracket as a template. You have some lips here this is going to butt up against the outside of the frame here, so like this. Those hit up against our frame. And now on the underside of the frame, you wanna mark your holes here, so you're gonna have two on each side. This one is slotted to allow for varying length frames. You wanna make sure that the hole you drill is going to go through the bottom of your I-beam here on the inside. So just pick the point there and mark it. It's best if you stay between the small dimples you kinda of see on the sides here. We're gonna do that on each side and then drill those marks out with a 5 16 drill bit, just like I have done here. You'll then repeat this same process on the other side. To help ensure that you get these lined up, I like to use some kind of indicator here on our trailer. So I was using the spring perch, measuring from the spring perch back to uh, my bracket when I had it up there. And then I'm going to measure the same distance from the spring perch here on the other side and go back so I get these horizontally lined up. We'll now take the small carriage bolts that come in our kit. We're gonna slide those up through the holes in our bracket. We'll then slide our bracket up through the holes that we drilled out. And we're gonna place a flange nut on the other side. We're gonna repeat that for the three remaining holes. And now we'll tighten them down with a 13 millimeter socket. We'll now take the cross tube brace. We're going to set that on top of our bracket like that. We're gonna use the same size carriage bolts to go down through the square holes in our cross brace bracket that will go down through our mounting bracket there. And then we're gonna use the same flange nuts that we used before to secure these. Now we're not gonna tighten these all the way down yet. Just wanna get them on there a few turns to hold it in place. So we need it to be able to move for our next step. 
We'll now prepare our other side in the exact same manner, leaving this one loose as well. We'll now take the cross bar. We're gonna slide it into our cross tube brackets. You'll need to slide it pretty far in to one to allow you to bring it back into the other. We're now gonna go ahead and make sure this hole is centered between our two brackets. All right, now that we've got it all centered up, we need to mark the holes that are in our cross tube braces here on each side of the brace, as well as on each brace on each side. When doing this, I recommend that you push up on the bottom of the brace so that it's kind of flush here with the bottom to help make your marks be more accurate. We've gone ahead and removed our bar now, and we're gonna to need to drill out our marks using a 3 8 drill bit. When you drill those out, you wanna try and drill it as centered vertically as possible. Now that we've got our holes drilled out, we can put it back in. We'll now take the long bolts that come in the kit. We're gonna place a flat washer on it and slide it through our beams. And on the other side, we're gonna place another flat washer followed by a flange nut. We're gonna repeat this for the three remaining holes, one on this side and two on the other side. Now that we've got our center bolts inserted, we can tighten down the bolts on the side we previously installed. Then we can tighten down our cross brace bolts. We're gonna use 13 millimeter sockets for all the bolts on our brackets and 15 millimeter sockets for our center brace bolts. We can then go back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna lift our C-jack into position, lining up the holes at the back of our C-jack with the flanges here. We'll be using the flange bolts that come in our kit. Those will slide down through the top of our bracket, through our C-jack, and then we'll place flange nuts on the other side. Now we'll put in the other side. We're gonna use the same hardware. It's gonna slide up this time through the C-jack into our bracket. Then on the other side, we're gonna place a nut just like we did before. There's a total of four, two on each side for this outside. Once you've got one on each outside with the two in the back that we already installed, the jack will hold itself up, making it easier to get the rest of your bolts in. We've gone ahead and repeated the same process on the other side. Now we can go back and tighten out all of our hardware. We're gonna use a 15 millimeter socket and wrench to do this. And just like before, we're gonna come back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. We'll now need to mount our level sensors. You'll have two sensors, one for the front, one for the rear. They're gonna mount identically. We'll begin by taking our sensor and mounting it to its mounting bracket. So it's gonna be the rounded edge side is we're gonna use the holes closest to those. We're gonna set our sensor on it, line it up with the holes. And on the bottom side, we'll use the self-tapping screws that come with the kit and thread those into our sensor. We'll then tighten those down with an eight millimeter socket. You wanna be careful not to over tighten these as it is just plastic on the sensor side. We don't wanna strip those out. Now we wanna find the center of our bracket here, left to right, we'll go ahead and mark that. Now that we've got it marked, we're gonna mount it onto the bottom of the vehicle here. Now for our rear sensor, you wanna make sure that you're behind your C-jacks that we just installed, and we want it to be in the center of our trailer. So I've gone ahead and marked the center on one of the beams here. We've got our mark on the bottom, so we can line that up with the mark there. Now we're gonna line this up with the center there, so that way our bracket is in the center 
of our trailer with the sensor facing forward. If you also look on our sensor, it does say forward and rear with the arrows. You want to make sure you got that in the proper orientation. Now to access this beam here, you may have some of this cardboard style covering on the bottom. You may have to cut out a square to get access to your beam. You can just use a razor knife to trim that out. We'll now line it up there. We're going to mark our holes and we're going to use self-tapping screws that come with our kit to mount it into those holes. We'll use the same self-tapping screws we use to mount our sensor to its bracket to mount the bracket to the bottom of the vehicle. With everything done here at the rear, we can use the exact same procedures we did here to get everything mounted up in the front. You do want to verify in your instructions to make sure you're installing it in the correct location. You're going to have to make that same draw line with a string from the wheel to the front lowest point of the trailer to make sure you're not installing it in a place where it doesn't have enough clearance. You still need that nine and a half inches of clearance up there. And our sensor that we mounted behind our C-jacks here for the rear will mount in front of your jacks on the front. And now with our front installed, we'll move on to our tongue jack. You'll remove your old jack and our new one's going to go right where that one was located. It slides down in the same hole and it's going to use the same bolt holes that you already had in your trailer frame here. We'll secure it using the bolts that come included with your kit. And then we'll tighten them down with a 13 millimeter socket. We'll then install the included foot plate by sliding it onto the extension on the jack, placing our pin through, and securing it with the cotter pin on the other side. Next you'll need to mount both of your panels. You'll have an exterior panel, like the one we have here, that'll come in your kit. You'll just simply need to cut out a rectangular hole for the panel to slide into, and then use the screws that come with it to secure it to the side of your camper or RV. You'll also need to mount your interior LCD panel. Now this panel has a mounting bracket, so you'll need to cut the hole out for that. You can use the bracket itself as a template to cut that hole out, and then use the screws that come provided with it to mount it. There's four little prongs here that this will slide onto and drop down to keep it in place. There is additionally two holes here on the bottom that you could place screws in as well to keep it secured to that bracket. Now you can mount these wherever you like. This is where our customer wanted it to be mounted, so we placed it there. We've now got all of our external components mounted. We need to route all the wiring for those components to the location on the inside where we're gonna be mounting our control panel. I'll get all the wiring router now and I'll show you the path I took to get it there. Now you can take all of the wiring that comes in your kit and plug it into their respective components. They're all gonna be labeled on the wiring so it's nice and easy to determine which one plugs into where. See here this one's labeled right rear for our right rear jack. And there'll be labels on there as well for your screen and your sensors so everything will be nice and easy for you to get those connected. We took all of our wiring, we routed it over to our passenger side, and then went up the frame rail on the passenger side to the compartment where our control module is going to be located. Along the way, we secured it with zip ties. You can pick up some zip ties here at eTrailer.com. There's a gas line pipe that runs down our passenger side, so we attached it to that. We're now in the very front passenger side compartment. We used a two and a half inch hole saw to drill out in the corner here on the floor to route our wiring up into the compartment. If we go up from our wiring, we've got our control module mounted on the back wall right here. We just use some self-tapping screws to get that mounted. There are some wood screws that come in your kit and you can use those as well. Now, as you can see here, there is an awful lot of wires, but since everything's labeled on the other end of the wire as well, it makes it nice and easy to plug it into our module. Our module's also labeled, so you really can't get it wrong. We'll just now plug all these in into their respective locations. Now, depending on where you've decided to mount your components and the length of your trailer, some of the wires may not be quite long enough. This wire here we had to extend. This is the can power that goes to the LCD display. The harness that comes with that is just a connector with about six inches of wire on it. And we needed to go all the way from the display up here to battery power, which we're gonna be teeing off of our control panel here. So you can pick up some wire here at eChelly.com if you need some to extend it, or any of your other wires. And this is what it looks like with all of our connections made. We've gone ahead and bundled up all of our excess wiring using some zip ties. Next, you'll want to install a 50 amp circuit breaker, and you're gonna connect one end to the battery positive. That'll be your bronze post, and the silver post, you're gonna connect 
to your control panel on the inside, to the positive post. The black wire that is part of the loom with the red wire is going to connect to ground, which you can do directly at the battery, and the other end is going to connect here to the negative post on our control module. Additionally, the wire that we had to extend, our CAN bus power, we hooked those here as well. So we have our positive on the positive and our negative on the negative. Our two CAN connectors here, one goes to your LCD screen. The other one we need to plug our terminating resistor into. The terminating resistor allows proper communication between the modules. So we're gonna plug that in there. Our other terminating resistor plugs in next to the CAN wire on our LCD screen here in the back. Once you've got it all hooked up, your LCD screen should be illuminated. You'll have your MyRV and your leveling options. Now, if you forgot to plug in your terminating resistors, you would only have the MyRV, you wouldn't have the leveling because the LCD screen would not be communicating with your control panel. So it's just a quick hint in case you're missing that leveling option, double check to make sure you got those resistors plugged in. And now we're ready to start leveling. And that completes our installation of Lippert Components Electric Ground Control TT Automatic 5-Point Travel Trailer Leveling System on our 2019 Keystone Springdale Travel Trailer.